Okay, so volume, volume swell there. So let's move on now. Now we're going to talk about on shape 3D modeling, and we are going to do a live solve of a pretty cool model. This model was from the um, episode of Model Monday Live last week. It's practice model number 5 11, gate hinge. And it's also just a cool model, just kind of a fun model to work through and kind of a fun model to think about. So I thought this would be a cool one for us to do. 3D modeling live solve. We're gonna try to live solve this thing using Onshape. And so the model that we're gonna work on here is called Gate Hinge. It's in millimeters. The material is 1060 alloy. And uh, the question is, what is the mass of this part in XX, XX grams? And we're gonna try to answer this question using Onshape. Now, one thing that I noticed with this model here is that it looks to be symmetric. It looks like if I were to, you know, take a line run right down the center of the model that way or right down the center of the, the model this way i'm gonna have the same thing on each half of the model and when you're looking at a 2d print you can confirm that by looking for a note that says clsym center line symmetric so that tells me that i only really need to create half of the model here i don't need to model the whole thing so then the next question is going to be where am i going to get started on this model and i think for this model i'm going to get started by looking straight down from the top and creating a shape looking down from the top so I think that the first sketch that I'm going to create is going to look something like this. It's going to come out, it's going to have this shape here, and then it's going to come back. And I'm just going to create half of that overall shape. I don't have to create the whole thing all at once. Now, in Onshape, Onshape does make it very easy and convenient to create multiple uh, entities in one single sketch. So I'll probably also include this circle here in that first sketch. So my first sketch is going to look something like this. And it's a really good habit to get into to kind of visualize what that first sketch is going to look like before you get started. And then as you go through and you start creating the model, you can pivot a bit if you need to. So then I think it's fair to say that my second sketch is going to look something like this. I don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but it's probably going to look something like this. Maybe I'll even include this circle since it's a through hole in that second sketch. It's probably going to look something like that. But then I'm going to run into some challenges, and so it's really good to kind of identify or think about what type of challenges you might run into as you go through and create this model. And I think the biggest challenge I'm going to run into has to do with this curved section here, where we have to kind of capture this curve looking down from the top, but then we have to incorporate it on this fin section that's sticking up. And then I think the other part of this model that's going to be a bit of a challenge is going to be capturing whatever's going on on this backside face here. It's like it's tapering down at that angle and matching that angle. But some of the dimensions that we're getting are from that upper edge, like this edge here corresponds to this edge here, which has that 65 dimension and that has this 155 dimension. So I think that's going to be a little tricky as well. So once you come up with a basic game plan, you are ready to get in there and start modeling. I'm going to use the window snipping tool to capture this model. So now I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna choose create document in on shape. I'll call this 24-05-11-gate hinge. I am using uh, my public version of on shape. I also have a professional seat of on shape, but here I'm using the public seat of on shape or the free seat of on shape. So if you ever wanna see how I created this model, you could just search for this name. Whoops, let's name that correctly, uh, dash 11. So you can just search for this 2405-11 gate hinge in the public space, and then you could see this model and you could kind of poke through it and see how I did it. So I'm gonna start out on the top plane here, begin a sketch. I'm gonna get normal two with this uh, sketch, and then I'm going to uh, create a center line. So I'm gonna start here at the origin, begin a line, and I'm gonna press Q on my keyboard to convert that into a center line. And then I think I'm gonna just create a circle here just to kind of give me like a nice foundation for this uh, initial sketch. And that circle is gonna have a diameter of 66. And that's representing that radius 33. And then once I've got that circle in place, I can create a line coming off of that circle. I know that that wasn't really my initial idea. Initially, I was gonna create that entire sketch, but just dropping in a circle with the correct dimension will help me kind of make sure that I size everything else correctly on the first pass. So now I'm gonna create a line here that comes off of that circle. I'm gonna single click. I'm gonna come back and hold my mouse over the endpoint and come away. And then I'm gonna single click again and then type in a radius 165. Then I'm gonna create a horizontal line coming off of that. I'll close off that sketch and then I will bring that maybe back to that center point to kind of close off everything. And then I can create another line coming off of here, single click, move back, touch the end point, single click and come off of that. And that line or that arc is gonna have a radius of 38 over two. And there we go. And now I could take this point and this point, make them horizontal, and then just drop this point here on this line to lock that into place. 
So now I'm ready to put in some, some additional dimensions, like the width of this section here is going to be at 127. The distance to the start of that slot is going to be 65. The um, distance from this line here to the center of our model is going to be that 155 that we talked about earlier. Looks like I missed a tangency relationship between this line and the arc. So let's pick those two and make them tangent by pressing T on our keyboard. And we're also going to define the angle here. It's the total angle of 45. So this would be 45 slash 2 to give us that angle. And then one more tangency relationship here. So this line and this arc are going to be tangent. So I'll press T. And there we go. Nice, fully defined sketch. Get rid of all that blue. Change the whole sketch to black. And you are ready to go. So now we can jump into an extrude command. And I'm not going to extrude everything here. So I'm just going to press space on my keyboard to clear those selections. And instead, I'm going to go through and kind of pick and choose what I'm going to extrude. And so what those things are going to be is going to be this geometry here, really just that geometry there. And that's going to come up to a height of 20 millimeters. And then I can choose to show that sketch and I can use that sketch again to do another extrude of just this geometry here. And that's going to come up to a height of 25 millimeters. So now I've created that kind of first feature in that model, and now I'm ready to move on and create the next feature in this model. And this next feature is gonna be a boss extrude off of this face here. So pick that face, begin a sketch, get normal two. If it's if normal two is the wrong way, or if it's not uh, intuitive, you could kind of set normal two to be the other way. So this is going to be a line that starts down here at this end and kind of cuts through that corner and then come back, touch the end point, come around and single click in the background. And that's gonna be a radius of 25. And then another line that comes off of that tangent, uh, like so, you can just kind of drop it out in space. And then um, we'll close that off with a horizontal line that comes over to this original corner here. So this corner and this line need to be coincident. So I press I and this point and this corner uh, also need to be coincident. Just do this this way probably should have done that point first there we go and now we got to add some dimensions here so the dimensions are going to be an angle dimension to this line here of 45 an angle dimension to this line here of 35 and a height dimension to the center of this arc here from the base and that is going to be 65 and then once again, um, just because of how Onshape is very friendly to the idea of multiple contours, I could create these other circles here kind of all in one step. So just kind of drop them all in there. And now we're ready to turn this into an extrusion. So we go to extrude. Onshape tries to extrude everything. I'm just going to press space in the background to clear those selections. And I'm just going to select this region here to extrude. And that is going to get extruded in this direction to a depth of 15 millimeters. So there we go. That takes care of that shape. Now let's show this other shape and let's extrude that that other shape. So we'll pick here in this region and we're going to extrude that. And that extrusion is going to be uh, a depth of, it's going to go inward. It's going to go to a depth of 140 minus 80 divided by 2. So it's going to be 140 minus 80 divided by 2. Okay, so also known as 30. That's going to be the, that's that's coming from this dimension here. This 140 minus 80 and then divided by 2. That'll give me this length here. But then the other dimension is a little more tricky. It's this 127 dimension. So what we need to figure out here is what is the offset from here to here in order to get the kind of starting offset for that, um, uh, for that shape. So what we could do here, a lot of times what I do in this spot is I just kind of like... I use the math and I just kind of do my best. Uh, it might not be perfect. It, it might just be kind of like a close guess. I might have to refine afterwards. But what I could do here is I could go down here into this section where it says um, off starting offset. So with the starting offset, you can see that what you can do is you could say, I don't want it to off I don't want it to start from the original sketch. I want to offset the original sketch over. And so right now I'm offsetting the original sketch over by 50. Uh, in this direction, so offsetting at 50 in this direction. So it's not going to be 50. It's going to be 127. Uh, sorry, it's going to be 140 minus 127. And then once again, that's going to be over 2. And that should, I think, in my brain, uh, that should be the correct math to get that into the right spot. So if I, if I create that 140 uh, minus 127, uh, all, you know, over 2, then I can hit the green check mark. And then I could maybe take a measurement once I mirror this thing to see if I got it right. 
So if we if we did a mirror here, if we go mirror and we say we want to mirror this entire part about this face here, hit the green check mark, and then we could look at this face just by clicking on it and this face just by clicking on it. And we can see down here that the parallel distance is 140. Then I could hit the space bar and I could pick this face and this face. And I can see down here that the parallel distance is 80. So a lot of times, like if you just kind of use your, you know, use your math. We all, we all have a pretty good background in math. Use your math, try to get close, and then once you're done, just do a quick sanity check. Just kind of look at that, you know, look at those what those dimensions are supposed to be on the model, and then compare them to your drawing. And that, you know, that might actually, you might get it right. Maybe you'll get it right the first time. So here you can see in Onshape, we have a rollback bar. So I'm going to roll back uh, before that mirror so I can do some final features here. So one of those features is going to be uh, an extrusion. One of the things about Onshape that's kind of cool is you don't have to make a sketch. So I could just pick this face here, and then I could choose S key extrude, and I could say remove, and that's going to go through all. And so what I'm doing there is I'm taking that profile of that face and just using that as the extrude profile and just blasting through the model. Real quick, easy way to clean up that face. But we always like to use delete face. Anytime we can use delete face, it's bonus points here in the world of Too Tall Toby. So I'm also going to try and use delete face on this model. So delete face, I'll pick this face here and look at that on shape. Just It just knows, it knows exactly what I want there. So I could do a delete face there. So all of my dimensioning came from this edge when everything was sharp going down here. And then when I'm done, I could do a delete face and then let on shape take this face and extend it down to that final um, boundary. So we hit the check mark. There we go. That looks excellent. I like the way that looks. That side over there looks good as well. Let's roll forward to finish that mirror. And now the final thing we need to do with this model is just go into a hole feature. And this is going to be um, a counter bore using metric, metric counter bore. And the, uh, the diameter of the drill for this is going to be 25. I'll press the tab key on my keyboard. The uh, diameter of the counter bore is going to be 44. Press the tab key. The depth of the counter bore is going to be 10. And then I'll click this icon here, this button, select mate connectors so that I can reference the center of this face or the center of this edge. So there we go. Boom. Do what's called the final spin where we look at the 2D print and then we look at the model and we say, yep, that looks pretty close. Right mouse button down here and say assign material. And we're gonna assign a material from the Too Tall Toby custom materials library. This is gonna be the material 1060 aluminum. Hit the check mark and then we'll click down here for uh, display mass properties. Actually real quick flex here. We'll do a edit appearance and we'll make this look kind of like the print as well. Just a little flex there. You can press P to hide your planes or you can press shift P to hide anything that you used for construction. You could uh, go over here to the view and you could say view this in perspective to really make it look good. Whoa, <laughs> that's a lot of perspective, but really make this thing look good. And then we could go to our uh, mass properties, click on this part, and we're coming up with a mass property of 1,300 grams, 1,300 grams. So let's see if that's correct. Did we get it correct? Let's find out here. The correct answer is 1,300 grams. Oh, yeah, we did it. We did it. GG, Toby. 1,300 grams is correct. We did it. So that is the live solve of the gate hinge using Onshape. Um, some pretty cool lessons in there. I really like the use of the offset to start this, the um, extrusion and then using some math there to kind of break the thing in half and then break it down even further. Um, and that way, you know, you could, it would be way easier just to make those planes or make some type of a reference point uh, in, a, in the top, top view layout. But it's kind of good to know that you also have some, some other decisions you have to go down. Thank you, Josh.